Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So, Steam Next Fest is live right now. There's thousands of really interesting games, all of them looking for a wishlist. Now, a few weeks ago in my Game Dev Report newsletter, I asked people if they were going to participate in this festival. I actually got a bunch of replies, so thanks for that. And one of them was about this game, Blood Bar Tycoon. It's a very interesting game. It's a vampire tycoon themed game where you run a bar. You need to make it welcoming for humans so you can then kidnap them and harvest their blood. I think it's a very clever idea, it looks really nice. I actually saw some ads about this game on Reddit quite a few weeks ago. As soon as I saw it, I was interested right away. I really love the idea. It looks like the developer is a viewer of this channel, so that's always awesome. Here, let's look at both the game and the Steam page to try to learn something. And importantly, try to learn why the game is already doing quite well. We can look at SteamDB, we can go here and check out the charts. And we can see that, yep, the game currently has about 800 followers. So I'm guessing between 8,000 and 10,000 wishlists. That's a pretty nice amount. And the release date is in February of 2025. So I'm guessing by then might launch with maybe 15 to 20,000 wishlists, which again, really nice amount. We can analyze this to try to figure out why this game is finding quite a nice amount of success. So I said that why? First of all, is one thing that a lot of people miss, especially a lot of marketing beginners. A lot of people think that marketing is really all about making devlogs, making Twitter posts, Reddit, and so on. And that is true, all of that is definitely marketing. But before you do all of that work, before that, one of the most important decisions you have to make is what the game actually is. Meaning, what is the theme? What is the hook? What is unique about the game? How does it stand out from the thousands of other games on Steam? Jonas Aronler, who is a very successful indie developer himself, he made a really excellent video pretty much all about this topic. I highly, highly recommend that you watch this video. Marketing is indeed extremely important. If you want to be successful, you cannot ignore marketing. Which, by the way, Jonas even pinned his own comment, just because it wasn't super clear from the video. The video is not trying to discourage you from doing marketing. You should absolutely not skip or ignore marketing. Marketing is indeed extremely important. However, marketing is really just a multiplier on top of your game. And as you know from first grade math, if you have zero multiplied by any kind of number, the result is always going to be zero. Meaning if you have a bad or simply just a generic game, then no amount of marketing will save you. And on the other hand, if you have an excellent game, but you do absolutely no marketing, at that point, the results are also going to be either zero or pretty much based on luck. So the core takeaway to what I'm saying is that marketing is extremely important, but it's a multiplier that works on top of your game idea. So your game needs to have something that hooks people, something to make it stand out and not be just yet another puzzle platformer. Another excellent video that I highly recommend you watch is the one by Ryan Clark on how to make video game hooks. Well, on some genres, it's actually quite hard. For example, on puzzle platformers, making one that stands out, one that does something different that no one has seen, making that is actually quite difficult in this genre. But in other games, it is much easier. For example, the simulator genre, you can just simulate different things, just change the theme, and all of a sudden you can find quite a lot of success. If you just search for a simulator on Steam, you can find quite a lot of games finding a lot of success. So you've got the TCG Card Shop Simulator. This is one of the biggest hits recently. Power Wash Simulator, Fast Food Simulator, Supermarket Simulator, Farming Simulator, Storage Hunting Simulator. You've got Gunsmith Simulator, Escape Simulator, and tons, tons more. One big reason why a bunch of these games found quite a lot of success is exactly because of that. It is because of having a very nice, unique hook. So I believe that is one of the main reasons why this game is finding quite a nice amount of success. The hook is very interesting, the concept is quite nice. Tycoon management games are really all about concept. And making a vampire management game, a game where you have a normal area for humans, and then a backstage area where you actually harvest those humans and get their blood, that sounds like a really excellent concept. It doesn't even need a clever name, I think this name is excellent, Blood Bar Tycoon, literally extremely descriptive, it just says what the game is. Like I said, I remember seeing some ads for this game on Reddit, and the name and the concept was really all I needed to be extremely interested in this game. So my advice to you is quite simple, spend more time on the ideation part of your games. If your goal is financial success, then don't just get to work on the very first idea that pops into your head. Spend some time thinking of a good, nice hook that can catch your player's attention right away. Now, of course, after the hook, you still have to deliver upon it, so the game itself has to be good. You have to deliver both on the game and on the Steam Store page itself. Once people click on your game name, they still have to click on the wishlist button or the buy button. So over here, let's look at the store page. First of all, like I said, the name is very good, nice and descriptive, that's perfect. Secondly, I think the capsule is also quite good. It shows a name and a nice fancy vampire drinking some blood. Then the background shows something that kind of looks like a bar. So very descriptive, very good, clean thumbnail. I think perhaps maybe the background might be a little bit too busy. So maybe I would add a little bit of blur just to make the character and the title stand out a little bit more. But that's just a minor nitpick. Just like this, I think it's already great. Then for the screenshots, they have quite a nice amount of variety. So we can see an overview. We can see the building in action. We can see the behind the scenes on what happens to the humans. We can see we have a grid system. We have some interesting characters, expand map, a bunch more events and so on. I have no idea why this screenshot is pretty small. So maybe there's a minor issue there. Then on the trailer itself, also a pretty nice trailer. It gets right to the action right away. So there are no delays on watching logos, watching publishers and so on. Nope, just get straight to the action. That's great. Although right at the beginning, this little background art saying improve vampire bars, 
This for some reason seems super basic. Like the game itself, the art is really excellent. I think the game visual looks really great. But this little pop-up over here just seems way too basic, way too amateurish. So there's a bit of a weird contrast there. I would maybe look into some kind of video effects package to make some kind of blood effect that looks a little bit more interesting than this. Then the Commandant trailer itself, I think it is quite nice. So it starts off by showing the building. That's important on any kind of tycoon game. It quickly gets to what is actually unique about the game. Captures some humans. That's nice. It shows what happens in the back and in the front. That's great. Then it shows a bunch of interesting events. So that's nice. What happens with those events? How do you clean things up? It also shows some really nice vampire elders and a bunch more. So all in all, a really nice trailer. And now, by the way, the way that most Steam players watch trailers is actually like this, really small, and they just quickly skim over a bunch of pieces, meaning they don't usually watch the whole thing. They skim through it to try to see if they're interested, and if they are, then they will enable sound and then put it on full screen. Now with sound enabled, the video really just has music. There are no sound effects at all. I'll definitely add those. Those add quite a little bit more to the feel of the trailer. Also at the end, I think it would be nice to see what exactly is the final goal with the game. What is the ultimate goal? Like, do you manage multiple bars? Do you maybe manage some kind of vampire underworld? Some kind of vampire empire? So it would be nice to perhaps see what exactly is the late game for it. And finally, this has what I'm assuming was the previous release date, 28th of October 24. Whereas right now on Steam it's 25, so it really just needs a minor update. Oh no, just some minor tweaks, but I quite like this trailer. Then scrolling down the Steam Store page, first of all, localization, really awesome. If your game is not very text heavy, then it's actually not very expensive or tricky to add localization, so you should definitely do it. Unity has their own localization package, which is actually really awesome. I use it myself in my latest game, Dinky Gardens. I have a lecture on it in my Ultimate Unity Overview course if you want to learn about it. Then here on the Store page, first of all, it has a nice wishlist now call to action, that's great. I would maybe just animate it slightly, just make it pop out a little bit more. Then gifts in description are always good. You should always include gifts in your description. The only thing here is I would just add some more. There's really only two of them. There's one for build, one for harvest, but then what exactly happens after that? You should basically have a gift to describe what exactly is unique about your game. And in here, yep, building and harvesting, those are definitely very important things. But then over here, there are some more selling points that could definitely have some nice animated gifts. As always, remember the saying, show, don't tell. So yep, over here, you should definitely show this. So I'd perhaps make one for this. Unleash your vampiric creativity. Apparently you can renovate your design and modify a bunch of things. So I'd make a GIF showing all the customization, how the bar can look so different. And personally, I love any kind of automation element, so I would also add a GIF for this one. Automating some minions, what exactly does that mean? Do you have minions walking around automatically? I think that would be a fun GIF. Or maybe the Elder Vampires, those do seem to have a really nice model, so I would perhaps add a GIF for those. Again, players are very visual. First, they look at the GIFs, and only if the GIFs actually interest them, only then do they actually read the underlying test. So like I said, I would add maybe two or three more GIFs. Other than that, description is quite good. It has some nice bullet points, so very easy to see what are the main selling points of the game. I would just add another wishlist now right here at the end. So add one at the top and one at the bottom. So if people read the whole thing, they remember, okay, go up and wishlist again. Oh no, really nice description. And then down here, also really nice for the developer to add this. This is something that Steam added just recently. You can add this little thing with your developer widget. If you have multiple games, and it actually shows your games. So for example, in my game, if I scroll down, yep, over here, this one shows all the other games that I've made. So if you have multiple games on Steam, definitely go ahead and enable this widget. And then down here on the more like this, this is a great way to see if your tags have been applied correctly. And right away, I can see RimWorld, Factorio, Norland, Shape S2. Yep, all of these are games that do sound quite similar. All of these are automation management simulation games. So yep, that tells me that the tags for this game have been correctly set. Oh no, I think this is a really great Steam page. By the way, if you want to learn what makes a great Steam page, if you want to see some analysis just like what I did right here, then definitely go check out the videos that I did with Chris Lukowski. Chris is a C marketing expert, so you can definitely learn a lot from all of these videos. You can learn a lot from him. Most of the marketing knowledge that I know, I've learned it from him. Definitely check out those videos, link in the description. So I think the game concept is great. I think the store page is great. Now let's check out the game itself. All right, so main menu, nice and simple. It does have the wishlist now button, so that's always great. Starting off with a nice tutorial, that's always extremely important, both in the final game and also in the demo. Remember how when you have so many demos and it's so easy to install them, that means your game needs to have an excellent tutorial, it needs to be super easy, super intuitive to learn how to play. I did make a video with a bunch of tips for how to find success during a Steam festival. Definitely go watch that video if you're about to participate in a festival. And one of the main tips is to implement Unity Analytics. Specifically, make sure you implement them in such a way that you can see all the stages of the tutorial. So you can very quickly see, are players actually following the tutorial or are they bouncing off? Alright, nice intuitive controls. Just right click and do something very intuitive. Let's place down some furniture. Let's see, where's the entrance? Right there. Let's go with a cheap metal table. Place it over there. And some cheap chairs. Alright, I quite like the nice polish. I like the animation when placing the buildings. 
That is nice, super satisfying, the sound effect, also really good. Let's place a beer pump, there it is. Can I rotate it? I'm not sure. Okay, let's open the bar, and again, tutorial, very important to make nice flashing things. Well, let's open the bar and let's see. So this one, let's go, I guess over here, let's go in priorities, make him autonomous. Okay, so now he's going to clean automatically, I suppose, or not. So I guess I need to enable autonomy and also enable all the things that I want to be automatic. So let's see the cleaning. Okay, so I guess that's it. All right. So let's automate all of these tasks. Let's see what it does. Okay, so our first customer wants to get a beer. Oh, feed them. So he needs some blood, I assume. I'm guessing this is the part where I interact with this guy. These tool tips are definitely very helpful. Recently, the tutorial told me to do something, but I wasn't quite sure. But thankfully, over here, the nice question mark that is super helpful. On games like this, always make sure you have a ton of tool tips. I made a tutorial on how to make a super dynamic tooltip system. So over here, let's right click and select consume. Okay, so right click on this one. Let's consume this person. Okay, let's see what happens. And he just, <laughs> just literally bites him, takes him. Does he die? Oh, okay, so he dies with just one bite. All right, here we go. He disposed of the body. Oh, he pushed it down, <laughs> down into the sewers. All right, now the goal is to attract six humans. So how do we do that? Go so under the bar. As long as it's open, there are enough seats available. And to attract them, we need to increase the bar's prestige with more furniture and multiple items. Okay, so now we can explore things a little bit more. So like with so many Tycoon games, naturally we've got pause, normal speed, fast speed. Okay, that's nice. Then apparently there's some kind of awareness mechanic. All right, that sounds good. So basically need to be sneaky as to how do I kidnap all the humans and eat them and so on. Then level one, apparently level is tied to prestige, okay. And bar themes. Oh, so different themes attract different types of people. Okay, that's good to know. And furniture, and we can, oh, show or hide the walls. Oh, that's nice. So I thought those walls, they look, they look nice visually, but it's a bit annoying to have to click through them. So actually this is quite nice. This is always one of my favorite effects when playing The Sims, is how you can just rotate around and it would show the walls. So it would be nice to have a third mode kind of like that, basically only, hides the walls that are directly in front of the camera so it would hide these walls and show these that would be a nice little uh, mix between making it look good with visible walls but also not making them block any of the gameplay okay so let's place down some more stuff let's see what we place things on the bar things for decoration machines okay and all of them how much money do we have five thousand oh and we have finance so i'm guessing we can take out a loan okay that's good nice Yet another nice tycoon game staple. I also quite like the wall effect. Very nice, very nice and satisfying. So something that I've said many, many times is definitely do not ignore polish. Polish is a super important part of game development. So here you would think like for the first prototype, you would click the button and the walls just disappear, but it is so much better, so much more satisfying to have them, first of all, visually go up and also have this little bounce that always adds quite a little bit more, makes it quite a bit more satisfying. This kind of thing you can do with so many assets. Like for example, feel, that is an excellent asset. I made a review on it, I use it in my game. I definitely highly recommend that asset, really awesome. And speaking of polish, this button seems to be the only one that does not have a mouse over state. All these other ones, nice, they increase in size, change color, but that one, for some reason, does not do it. Right, so I'm still not sure how exactly do I rotate an item. Okay, there you go, with R, all right. Oh, huh, interesting, so I can't place it directly next to the wall, it has to be a little bit off. Okay, so that's nice, so basically the grid the underlying grid system that one seems to be based on these that one seems to be based on these positions not necessarily on the squares themselves okay nice let's play a darts game as well okay then storage why do i need storage oh and right away more people are coming in and my little minion is now hungry so the minions also have satisfaction and they also have an alcohol level so i guess this one can also drink okay i'm guessing i need to serve more people before i can get some more minions because I'm guessing if I try to consume one of these guys right now, I'm guessing the others would leave. So let's try to attract six more humans. All right, yep. Attract the six. Nice. You now have access to the Vampire <laughs> Agency. That's a nice name. Hiring your first minion won't cost you more. This would cost to annoy you, Meko. Yep, let's hire some more vampires. That's nice. I like this one with the 3D models instead of how it is in most Tycoon games where you just have a list. So this is nice. Okay, so they have a salary and then some kind of cost. So I'm guessing this is how much I have to spend to hire them right now, and then how much I have to spend, I'm guessing, per day, maybe? I still haven't seen if there's a time of day system in the game. Okay, so they have stats and they have skills, nice. And apparently they all have the same skill, target the human, wipe their memory. Okay, let's go with Cassandra, she's pretty fast. Let's hire. Oh, oh, we have witnesses. Vampire law <laughs> requires all vampire activity to remain in the shadows. 
Leave no witnesses after an incident. I think this one is meant to... Okay, makes one of them forget, but then the other one does not forget. How do I stop the other one? Okay, we can now buy some blood bags, I assume? Okay, so I'm not sure why that one says minus 50 plus 100. So essentially, I can either consume living humans or just use money in order to buy blood bags. Okay, that's nice. So basically, the game has essentially two sides, either consuming human or I guess going the vegan option, I suppose. So wow, this one has quite the margin. Wow, so items in this game have quite a lot of margin. So basically, beer costs 10 bucks and they sell it for 50 bucks. Okay, all right, that's, that's pretty intense. Oh, some vampires showed up. Oh, that's interesting. So vampires are not only the workers, but they are also customer vampires and they have fame. Okay, they have fame and they have quite a lot of money. They've got two grand. And this guy only has 50k, 50 bucks, okay. Oh, construction, finally, nice. Yet another great tip when it comes to making any kind of tutorial. Always make sure you have some animated videos. That is so much better than just standard text. This is the video player component in Unity. It is super easy to do, so definitely make sure you do this. I have a lecture on the video player in my Ultimate Unity Overview course if you want to learn more. All right, so let it expand quite a bit. Let's make a doorway into this one. And there doesn't seem to be a way to create a room inside another room. Basically, I want to make a nice bathroom over here in the corner, but apparently I can't do it. I can only either extend or create brand new rooms. Okay, that's a bit odd. I guess I can technically destroy it and now recreate it. Okay, I guess this works. Oh, we can assign different rooms to different things. Either everyone, minions, or vampires only. So I guess let's make a separate room just for the vampires. All right, you have achieved your goals. Nice. Swear that will entrust you with another of my bars. Oh, interesting. Does this have another level? I've been playing for 30 minutes, so I would assume this is the end of the demo, but let's see. All right, nice world map. And yeah, apparently it does have another level. Wow, that's a pretty substantial demo. Usually when it comes to demo size, you want something that is about 30 minutes to one hour. I mean, it depends on the games. If you have something like a roguelike, something with a lot of replayability, then technically people can play for quite a while. But usually for demos, if you can get an average play duration of 20 to 30 minutes and you're doing pretty great, and if you can get above like 40 to 50 minutes and you're doing excellent. So yeah, pretty fun game, nice and enjoyable. Just on the early stages, it already is pretty nice. It's got all the mechanics you expect from some kind of tycoon management game. And of course, the whole vampire theme, the whole thing about serving human customers as well as vampires, that is really awesome. And upon trying to quit the game, it prompts you once again to add to your Steam wishlist. It's really great, you should also do this. Make sure to add buttons to add to your wishlist, both in the main menu, at the end of the game, and whenever people quit the game. Okay, so that's Bloodmar Tycoon. I love the concept and the game seems very well made. This is really just my kind of game. Many thanks to the developer for responding to my request and telling me their game. You can sign up for my Game Dev Report newsletter, which is where I wrote about that. This is where I cover the latest Game Dev news and any interesting Game Dev articles that I come across. So check that out to the link in the description. And if you want to learn more about Steam Game Marketing, if so, then go watch this video that I made with Chris Sukowski. In there, we cover quite a lot of tips on how to find success with your games.